Okay, this is the Long Garden. It's uh, about 75, not quite, 75, 70 feet long, perhaps. These rows are about 60 feet long each. This one, I started seeding way back in um, February for some things. So it's been going for a while. Well, the garlic was planted by Nikki Hill and she did that, I believe in, gosh, I wanna say, well, I think it was January actually, maybe December. So it wasn't that, it wasn't that super early, but it's been doing really well. We've given it compost tea twice by hand because it does want to get fertilized after it's this big. And it's just starting to want to do the garlic scapes. So as these start to appear, I'll be cutting those off. That's traditionally what you do is you cut these off so that the energy goes to the root instead. And then you can make all sorts of delicious food from that. So what's next to the garlic? Well, let's see. Next to the garlic are parsnips. The parsnips I seeded back in January or so. These need to be thinned. We'll pull one up and see how big they're getting. That's pretty good. So, cause this is about what, maybe three months old or something like that. So parsnips, that's a really interesting one. Parsnips, I started, first started planting parsnips in Oregon. And in, Oregon's a great place to grow them because if you leave parsnips in the ground over the winter time, when it gets cold, they turn sweet. I mean, almost candy-like, really good. You can eat them by themselves, put them in a root bag, mix them with mashed potatoes. I mean, there's all sorts of things you can do with them and they're delicious. And so a lot of farmers do plant them there, even though they're not common uh, in other parts of the country necessarily. They're not a common part of the diet. And they would plant them in June a lot of time. Well, in June in Oregon, usually the rain have stopped has stopped at that point. And so then you need to irrigate the heck out of them to keep them going. And I grew parsnips and I let them go into their second season and go to seed, flower and go to seed because they're a biennial like carrots and a lot of other root vegetables where the first season, they just grow all tops like this. And then in the second season, after they've gone through a winter, um, then they will send up their flower stock, they'll bolt and they'll make seeds. So I did that and I let them go to seed a couple of different times. And when the seed was in the ground, you know, just lying in the ground then and could germinate on its own, it would germinate in February or March. So that's a few months ahead of June. So I started letting them grow then at that point. And what I discovered was that that was perfect to do in Oregon because it was still raining then. So these parsnips would come up and they would get irrigated by the rain. You didn't have to do any work. You just had to thin them. And then when the summer came and there wasn't as much irrigation, they were already large enough that they could go sort of halfway into dormancy and survive just fine over the summertime. And they start to grow again when the rains came back in the late summer or the fall. I was really, in, we were really into trying to do dry farming as much as possible in Oregon. So we were dry farming parsnips like that. And in some locations where we dry, dry farm them like that, when we did finally harvest them in the winter time, when they were really good because it had gotten cold. So like the following January then, almost a year after you've planted them, that's when we would harvest them, December, January, February. At that point, we were digging up parsnips that were two, three, four inches across at the top. And uh, 10, 12, or even 18 inches long. So huge, without water, without fertilizer, just stuck in the ground. So anyway, I didn't know when they should get planted here in New Mexico, so I just planted them at the same time. Here they've been getting lots of irrigation from the tape. As we can see, that's uh, sizing up nicely for uh, this time of year, especially considering the fact that, again, we won't be harvesting them here until the winter time. So two 60-foot rows of that, if they do well, and they don't get eaten by, oh, I'll get eaten by underground critters. That's some decent food for next year. But it was funny. I never heard another farmer of another farmer in Oregon who would plant them in the spring. Everyone just planted them in June or May because that's what people said. No one ever planted them in February or March. So it's just this little lesson that 
you know, the people in your area can tell you what they've done that works for them, including farmers, but that's not necessarily always the best thing to do. So do what the old timers in your area say, just to try it because they're doing it for some reason, but then experiment on your own too and see what happens. Definitely. So those are the parsnips. I'm really happy about those. They're doing really well. Also in this garden is Italian parsley. I love Italian parsley. I love the um, mossy forest parsley, whatever the other stuff is called too, the curly parsley. I like that stuff as well. Really good with um, potatoes, I mean, good with all sorts of things. And of course, very high in vitamin C as well. This will overwinter in this area. So I've got a 60 foot row here that I'll start, be able to start harvesting, as you can see any time now. And then I'll be able to harvest throughout all of next winter. And a year from now, it'll be going to seed. Okay, time to look at something that's not doing so well. Turnips. Look at these turnips. Very sad. Look at the leaf. I touch it, it crumbles. It just crumbles into nothing. These leaves have been skeletonized. By whom? I don't know if you can see them. Tiny, tiny little critters there. Tiny, tiny little shiny critters. Flea beetles. Flea beetles. So there's still a little bit of fresh new foliage at the bottom here. These turnips might make it. They might not. They might just get killed by this. Now, I've dealt with these, with the flea beetles before, actually in Oregon, in Polk County. And there, the best thing to do, uh, really, was just not to plant brassicas that it wants to eat at this time of year. <laughs> They're going after the turnips and they're going after the mustard greens really bad. Not, interestingly, the bok choy in another garden, but these turnips, they're just ravaging. Some of the turnips will actually just die. This is one kind of turnip from a seeds that I saved. And these weren't as strong in the first place as these other ones. These are purple top, white globe turnips. These are doing better, fresher seed. But still, again, look at this. These leaves are just crumbling because they've just been skeletonized. Yeah, it's sad to see for sure. And I think these turnips are only just starting. They're only just starting to actually get a turnip root on them. Yeah. So what we discovered in Oregon was that they have a season. And if I were to plant seed these same things again, say a month from now, six weeks from now, they won't be around, I won't have a problem. So that might just be what I do with this pest is just accept the fact that it's taking this much now and remember that for future planting and plant more later. Because if you'll notice, here's the turnip being ravaged, very unhappy plants right next to it. Here's the parsnips, very healthy. Yep, so see, the flea beetle doesn't eat anything. It likes particular things. These two long rows here are for pepper plants. And if you look closely, you'll see I've put tags here. Tag, tag, tag. They're every three feet. Is that what it was, three feet? Yeah, every three feet and then staggered. Those are the places that I marked out for the peppers. It's still been getting down too cold at night to put the peppers in the ground. I'll show you those uh, later. They've been going in and out still. But I wanted to mark out where the pepper plants are going here so that I could plant other things in between in the meantime. So, I don't know if you can see that. Very small. Right there. Right there. Dill. Mammoth dill. This is for dill seeds for pickling later, because I do love me some pickles, as they say. So I planted dill in between these tags the entire row. So it doesn't go to the very end. So 50, 50 some feet of mammoth dill interspersed with pepper. I've heard that those might not be companion, good companion plants together. <laughs> so, so we'll see. Now the other side, I have seeded cilantro. Oh, see, you can actually see the little seed right there on top of that particular one. You can tell 
that the seed from cilantro, of course, is um, uh, coriander. So if you save, if you let cilantro go to seed and let the seeds dry, then you get coriander. So I've planted, I put one particular variety called Pokey Joe. And Pokey Joe is from Wild Garden Seed, I believe so. Pokey Joe, as the name suggests, is supposed to take a little while to bolt. It's not supposed to bolt right away. So I planted that one just for part of the way because no matter when you plant cilantro, it's gonna bolt and it's not gonna last all season and I want cilantro all season. So I just planted it for the first part. Then I'll plant it in sections, uh, uh, you know, in succession planting, as they say, as the season goes on in between the, in between the peppers. We'll take a quick walk to the back of the garden here. These messy looking piles on the ground here these are spinach plants that all over winter went to seed and now the seed's drying out. So I'm leaving them here as the seed dries out. You see the pokey looking stuff on there? Yeah, and yeah, those are pokey. Yes, those will hurt. Yes, this is a difficult seed to clean from the plants, but I wanted to save seed because it's always a good idea. This made it through the winter here. So it had good genes that way. It bolted sooner than I wanted to, but it did. It was winter hardy. And then in this back section, for the fun of it, we've got a section at the end of each hose that's just planted with mammoth sunflower seeds. And that's a variety from Baker Creek and Mongolia, I believe is where they said that they got these seeds. But the Helianthus annuus, that's a prairie plant from North America, from Nebraska, uh, Sonnenblum, that's my last name, that's sunflower in German. But sunflowers have been very popular around the whole world. The Russians, uh, the Mongolians, other people have taken them and bred them to their own purposes. And then here they are coming back again. So this is the long garden. It's trying to produce food for us right now with the parsley, hopefully some turnips soon some garlic maybe next month and then the parsnips and the parsley over the winter time and then when the turnips are gone later on the season perhaps that's where kale will go for overwintering or i don't know we'll see some of overwintering crop will go there but that's the lawn garden and maybe you've heard the beeps in the background it's supposed to keep the moles away as you can see it works a little bit but not totally That's going to be some good parsnips.